Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, we are going to see how to use a cloud config server to externalize our Spring Boot properties and how to integrate it with Git to form a centralized configuration repository for your microservice architecture. Let us start by creating a Spring Boot project. Go to File, New, Spring Startup Project. Uh, give a name to your, you know, uh, the cloud config server and click on next search for config okay you would see two uh, dependencies here one is for the config client and the other is the config server since we are going to create the config server here we will add this dependency to our pom.xml uh, the student service that we created as a eureka client right that should have the config client in its pom.xml okay so then select this and click on next and finish so for our example, I have already created a cloud config server in my local and I have it right here. Let me open up the application.java uh, file. So in this, uh, you have to enable at the rate of config server to make this Spring Boot project as a config server project. And then I also have added at the rate of enable Eureka client in order to make this config server you know, available in my Eureka server uh, you know, registry. Then let us move on to our uh, application.yaml. In my application.yaml file, I have given a name for my application which is cloud config server. I have given the git repository URL where my properties are going to be stored. Then I have mentioned the search path here. Configuration is going to be my parent folder. Inside that I am going to have multiple folders for each service. So the application.yaml uh, will, will be present inside those folders. So the structure is going to be like this. Let me give you an example how the structure of my Git is going to be. It is going to be student service slash application.yaml. I mean, then there are multiple files, just not application.yaml. There can be multiple YAML files, right? So this is how the structure is going to be. And this application, you know, uh, enclosed into curly braces will automatically be recognized by, you know, config server to get the service ID of the application and accordingly look for the properties and give it back to the, you know, the actual client. Uh, so I'm using SSH. Uh, you can use the direct HTTPS also and give a username password or a secret key like that. So I'm going to use SSH in this example. I've generated a private key and I've given the private key here. In a regular case, you might not be having this private key here in this property file. You might have it in a different file and try to refer that file directly in this private key. So in, for this example, I would, uh, I would directly given my private key here. So after that, what I've done is like, I have also added my Eureka service URL here, uh, which, which is pointing to my Eureka server. So let's go on to the pom.xml. So my pom.xml has the cloud config server uh, dependency here and then it has the Eureka client in order to you know, register the service as a client to the Eureka server. I want to show you how to create an SSH key and map it to your Git account. Okay, first let us take a look at our, you know, uh, the config repository. So what I did is like I created a repository in my, you know, public Git account. Uh, the folder structure is like this. It has configuration. Uh, there is an application.yaml here and then I have a student service. There is an application.yaml inside the student service. So what is the difference between this application.yaml and the application.yaml inside the student service? This is going to serve as a parent for all the multiple services available here. And the application.yaml inside the student service will be very specific to the student service. Uh, a better example would be like, for example, every service has to connect to the Eureka server, right? And every service has to have this Eureka server URL in it. So th those kind of information can be you know, directly put in the application.yaml of the parent folder so that you know, uh, this information will be directly pulled. And this is common to all the services. So informations like this can be put in the parent uh, YAML so that it can be used across the, all the microservices. Uh, then let us go and uh, generate a SSH key. Before that, uh, and I'll quickly show you. Uh, Git has an excellent documentation on how to generate the SSH key. Uh, the URL is right here. So it gives you step-by-step -step guide of how to generate a SSH key in your local mission. Uh, I request you to follow this and you, know, you will be able to generate the SSH key. Uh, once you uh, have followed all these processes, right? 
you have to add this SSH key to your uh, Git account, and then the you know, uh, and then you have to use the private key in your application. So the public key will be added to your Git account, and you, your application will use the private key. To add it to the Git account again, uh, GitHub has a help document, a step by step guide, which which is super clear, and it is you know it it goes step by step to tell you what exactly you have to do. So you just have to do the the processes the steps mentioned here and you'll be able to add it to your account so once that is account let us move on to our console so i am here at the console uh, so my i could see here like uh, the keys are generated here so you could see here id underscore rsa dot pub so this is the key that that is should that should be added to your git account and then there will be another key like id underscore rsa that is a private key if you do a cat id underscore rsa you should be you, you should be able to get it in your console once you get the key just copy that key and you know paste it into your uh, property file okay so let us take a look at our student service now let us first take a look at the pom.xml of the student service in the pom.xml of the student service there's one new difference that i added that is spring cloud starter config this is the client configuration uh, you know dependency that you have to add in the uh, in microservice that is going to share its properties with the config server let us go and take a look at our uh, you know the application.java the application.java doesn't have any annotations to mention that enable config client like that you just have to add the dependencies and you have to point the url of the config server into your application.yaml let me move on to the application.yaml so you could see here right so the application.yaml i have added a new key uh, which is spring.cloud.config uri so this config uri is the actual config server so spring automatically uh, you know uh, de detects this and it will automatically map it for you uh, let us let us quickly go and take a look at an example so that you will understand it even more better so what i did here is like i created a simple rest controller you do a get on it it's going to fetch a property key from the config server uh, let me quickly show you my config server repository uh, inside uh, student service inside student service i have the config server student key here and uh, in the parent uh, application.yml i have the eureka server url so my student service doesn't have a eureka you know uh, service url here if you don't mention the eureka url here uh, the client cannot register with the eureka server but if our config server setups works correctly right it should automatically pull the properties and it should automatically get registered in the eureka server let us test both the scenarios and see whether our config server with git integration is working fine or not let us move let us first start the server okay first i'm going to start the eureka server Eureka server is up. Now let's go and start our cloud config server. Config server is up. Now let's click on the microservice and start it. Let me quickly go to the console. I want to show you something here. All right, check this out. So fetching config from server at this particular URI. This is the first thing the application will do when it has a config server mapping to it. So it will try to pull the properties. If the properties doesn't get pulled, then it will result in an error. So looks like our application is up and running. Let us quickly move on to the browser and check the Eureka console, and then we'll move on and see the you know the get mapping example. Okay, uh, let me open up a new tab and let's go to our Eureka console first. All right, looks like our Eureka console is up and running, and we could see the student service has successfully registered to our Eureka console, and as well as the cloud config server. So it looks like our configuration properties is correctly being pulled from the Git repository and is used by the student service. Let us double ch check that by you know accessing our Git mapping URI. For this, I'm going to create a new tab and try to access that URI. My student service runs at 9001 uh, slash student. All right, hello from config server. So our property is now getting pulled from the config server. So now you can uh, go and externalize all your properties from your microservice into the config server so that it forms out a centralized you know, repository and you can easily externalize your properties. Thanks for watching guys. In our next video, let us take a look at Hystrix and Hystrix dashboard.